What are your goals worth to you? For the boys of St. Francis Academy in Baltimore, Maryland, the answer is everything. I'm your host, Victor Cruz, and this is episode four of HBO's The Cost of Winning podcast. Now, this is uh, part four, the fourth documentary, so to speak, is just incredible for me. Uh, and I think it really hit home uh, in certain areas for me because I was these kids at one point, right? I was Demon Clowney trying to figure out what school to go to and having a last minute change, right? I was I was that kid. I was the kid that had to go to prep school, right? Like big John Wallace, right? Big Wall. I was that kid that had to figure out how I'm going to make it to my goals and how I'm going to achieve my dreams coming from an area and coming from a place that didn't have that. I didn't have the resources to make it to the next level. I had to fight and I had to scratch and I had to really understand what I wanted in life and what that really looked like and how I wanted to change my mother's future, my family's future, and how I was the one that had that was riding on that. You know, I was the one responsible for my family. You know, I grew up, my dad passed away when I was 20 years old. My grandfather passed away shortly after that. So I'm looking around and I'm the man of the house. And for a lot of these kids, they are the man of the house. I'm noticing throughout the storylines, there aren't a lot of fathers there. Uh, there's a couple of father figures in their lives. There are a couple of people that care for them, but for a lot of them, Coach Poji is the father figure for them, right? And if you look at a guy like Ace Colvin, who's been in foster care and just trying to figure his way out through life and through the world. So that was just my biggest takeaways of, you know, going through the, the signing day process. You know, I remember signing with the University of Massachusetts, feeling great that day, wearing my hat around the school, only to find out later that I had to go to prep school, only to find out that I had to tell all my friends like, yeah, I won't be going to UMass just yet. I got to go to Bridgeton, Maine and figure my life out for a minute. So, man, I could relate to every single story that's going on with these kids and everything that they're going through because I went through the same thing. And I remember people asking me, you know, the pressures of the city, of the town. And if East Baltimore is anything how I pictured it, like Patterson, New Jersey, uh, they're going to go through the same things. Everywhere you go, where are you going to go to school, man? You should go here. Everyone has their own opinions about where you should go. But only you know in your heart and these players of St. Francis Academy understand understand with the good leadership they can do whatever they want they can have the resources they need they can go to any school in the country as long as they put their best foot forward and I think that's the biggest thing that I took away from this episode is coach Pogi being that father figure for them and not only that getting guys through school I mean not only are the highly touted guys right they had about 13 or 14 kids go to big five schools whether it's Oregon LSU Alabama Ole Miss I mean these guys are going to top tier schools but what about the other you know it's not just 15 kids on the entire team to to get every kid through school, whatever the way that looks like, right? Whether it's, you know, a, a scholarship to a prep school or JUCO for a year so you can get your grades up and go to a four-year university. Whatever that looked like for that perspective, student athlete, coach was making sure that they put their best foot forward. And that was really, really fun to watch. It's made clear from the start of the series that the school and coaching staff's ultimate goal for every student athlete is to get them into college. A member of the St. Francis Academic Support Staff, Ann Spencer, addresses some misconceptions about her students. Take a listen. What you will hear about St. Francis is our five stars, our four stars, our kids who have X amount of offers. And what you don't hear is all of the kids who don't have any of that right now and they're going to college next year, and they're changing the trajectory of their entire family's right. life. You know, that is the bigger story here. My guest today is one of the executive producers of the series, Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan is a superstar with almost too many accolades to count, but I'll name a few here for y'all. He's a New York Giants legend. I wish I would have played with him, but he decided to be a little bit older than I was. He's a Hall of Famer, co-host on Good Morning America, clothing designer with his collection by Michael Strahan and MSX Lines, two-time Emmy winner, author, and the list just goes on and on. I spoke to Stray about his role in producing this series, how years of playing team sports has helped him in his career, and the mentality of being an underdog. Here's that conversation. First of all, thank you for joining uh, this podcast. Thank you for your involvement in this project. And I want to start from the entrepreneurial side, Stray. What is it that you know drives you every day from your from your suit collection to what you do every day on GMA? 
talk to me about that transition from a player to, um, to, to being an entrepreneur and being your own boss and how that's been going for you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, man. I, I just, I aspire to be you. That's why I keep doing what I do. <laughs> and, and you're lucky. I, and I did tell you that when, when I, when I used to come to the games, when I had a chance, I said, man, I wish I would have played with you. Cause you took me, you reminded me so much of like the, the era of like football, you know what I'm saying? And you understand it because you're very entrepreneurial. So I, when I see you do things, I go, okay, I, I definitely feel like, like you do, playing football was a start. It wasn't all that you could do. It wasn't all that I could do, but it was a great start because it gives you, um, gives people an idea and a sense of who you are, or at least people get a chance to see you, and then you can parlay that into them really getting to know you as a person and who you are, but it puts you in a position to have opportunity to do things that you really want to do. And in this case, with the cost of winning to share stories and tell stories that you really want to share. So whenever I go into something outside of sports, I've just always had the mentality of when, not if. Like, I don't think in terms of if something's going to happen. My dad taught me that. It's like when it's going to happen. Say if something, something's going to happen. If it's doubtful, like, but when you're like when... It's just a matter of if it's going to happen. It may not happen exactly when you want it, but it will happen. So for me, it's been a fun ride because I've just had opportunities. I've created opportunities. I've been offered opportunities, and I'm not afraid to fail. So I'm willing to try. And I think just trying all these different opportunities has led to everything that I do right now. And I love that. And I think that's the entrepreneurial side, right? As you continue to you know, navigate this landscape as tons of different um, just just things that people come to you with and that things that you've seen. Uh, what is it about this specific story about St. Francis Academy, about the kids that go there? What was it about this role as you serve as an executive producer on this project? What was it about this project specifically that drew you to it? Because we always hear these stories, you know, it's usually about, um, you know, the, the negativity of, of the African-American neighborhoods and and, and, you know, I wanted to tell a story that surely that went and really showed the grit and, and hard work and the focus and desire that these kids have to put into um, into making a better life for themselves. I mean, they're in a tough part of Baltimore and you have an unconventional coach who came from a rival school, Biff Pogey, who comes there and he was a, a successful businessman himself. And he's taken a school where these kids were looked at as as basically nothing and has created and made them a powerhouse. But then when he makes them a powerhouse, all the other schools in their, their conference all of a sudden are afraid to play them. It's football safety. No, it's not football safety. It's just, you're getting your butt kicked by a school of African American kids who you thought, um, um, basically would never have achieved anything like this or anything in their lives. So this, I wanted to tell the story of this, this group of this team and of this school and of these kids who have fought so hard to create a better life for themselves against all odds. And, um, just to show everybody their journey in a positive light, you know, and, and I, there's so many good things out there that people need to see involving, um, these kids in our community. And this is just one of these stories that we could highlight. And that's why I was excited to bring this to everybody. And you know, you say coming from Patterson, I've been in that situation where I've always been the underdog. No one expects anything from you. You're just another number. You're going to, you know, you're never going to get out and do better with your life. You're just going to be just like, hey, we don't expect much and that they should expect of themselves. And life is full of challenges, and they're already going through a big tra challenge trying to make it out of the community in which they, they are, they're in. We had um, two of the kids on GMA, and it was, it was fantastic to see these the young men in college now wanting to, to, to go into business and then wanting to be a movie director, like just to see that they have these dreams that I don't think anyone told them they were allowed to pursue. And what Coach Pogi does is he says, hey, these are your dreams. Football can be a catalyst to that, but it's not everything that you can do. But this is a catalyst to to make your life better and move forward. You know, the Super Bowl you played in, definitely the Super Bowl you played in, and definitely the Super Bowl I played in as well. We were underdogs. You know, we were never the guys that were coming in and heralded and and, and guys that were given everything. We had to work. Yeah, you know, and isn't it isn't that funny though? Because I'm I'm the same way. I'll be working out, and I'm like, oh man. I don't feel like doing this weight. I don't feel like doing this many reps. And then you're like, uh-uh. You know, you got to finish, son. You don't quit. It's like, it's it's just, it's this 
thing. You just got to prove yourself and not only to like someone else, but to yourself, man. That was my whole thing. I only felt like I had to prove myself because, you know, I, I know your situation, how you came into the league, which is a lot different than mine. But I came from Texas Southern. I was at HBCU. Second round pick, granted, but nobody here saw me. And I could just tell that I was almost like a pick that was like a, chill, a chance. We don't know if he's going to do it. If he works out, great. If he does it, all right. And I'm backing up Lawrence Taylor. So, I mean, geez, what other pressure is that to do that? But I always felt like no one expected anything, man. And, and, and after practice, training camp, training camp, every a training camp, every day, I'm working out. I'm right there in that gym working out in, in Albany. I'm running extra on the treadmill. I'm doing it during the season. In there working out and doing extra because that's all I knew. I always felt like I needed to prove and need to prove to myself that in a game or in a situation when that other person is tired, oh, I know I got something extra in my tank because I'm in here after practice when I'm tired and I'm doing more than I know they're doing. I know I have it. And that's the same thing in business. I'll do whatever it takes, stay up late, read whatever I got to do, prepare myself so that if something is there and someone else is slacking on it, I'll pick it up and run with it. And and I think it's a mentality that once you that you is unique in a lot of ways to sports and especially team sports, where you don't want to let. I mean, you do it for yourself, but you realize it's a bigger picture. It's more than just you. And for me, it's everybody that I work with. It's my family. It's my friends. Like I I I, I want to make them proud, and I want to represent them well. And I think that motivates me a lot to do things that people don't think you should be doing or people don't expect you to be doing, especially coming from our backgrounds in sports where they think all you can do is sports. I like proving people wrong. There's a lot of work to do it, but I'm willing to put in the work. And you got to be willing to prepare. I think preparation is the biggest thing for these kids to understand. It's like you have to be able to prepare. And then I love this, uh, obviously, the fourth episode of the series where kids are facing the reality of what the next phase is, right? Facing the reality of, okay, am I going to go to college? Am I going to go to a prep school? Am I going to go to, you know, a four year LSU? We saw one of the instances where LSU decommit, you know, backed out of one of their recruits. And I was just thinking about how demoralizing out of everything that he's already been through, um, how demoralizing that would be to have a college that you were looking forward to go to, going to, playing football there at the highest level at LSU, and then in the 25th hour, they pull your scholarship like that. Can you just talk to me a little bit about, you know, that mindset and just what you would go through and what would go through your mind if that happened to you? You know, right now, as a, as in a grown man, a grown ass man, I can handle it. I'd be like, all right, all right, I'm going to show you. But as a kid coming out of high school, first of all, I'm, it would be devastating. It wouldn't be, a, you would probably feel embarrassing. Um, it would you would feel like probably the end of the world because you know how many people you ran around telling you going to LSU, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And how good it made you feel that one of the top programs that you're watching every Saturday on TV, you're going to be in that uniform on that field representing them and all of a sudden they have that snapped away not you know by, by them. Um, just absolutely devastating. But at the same time where opportunities like that go away, greater opportunities can come your way. And maybe that wasn't in the plan. Maybe that was not God's intention for him to go to LSU. You just have to adjust. And, and, and I know life is about adjustment. Nothing in my life has happened as smoothly as I wished it would happen or in the way that I wanted it to happen. My life has been about adjusting because um, I had to. If I wanted to make it work, I had to adjust, man. Or I'm going to be, you know, back home living with my mama, which was my whole, that was my whole goal. I just don't want to have to go live with my parents. I've been adjusting all these years to stay away from living in my mom's house. That's true. And I remember Coach Coughlin, man, he used to always yell at us, right? And I don't know if he, he I'm sure, I mean, he's definitely yelled at you guys before, but he would always say, you got to midstream adjust. Like things aren't always going to go the way you scripted it. They're not always going to go the way you planned it out. The playbook's going to change. It's never That route isn't ever going to be the way it looks on that piece of paper. At some point, you got to use your own mind. You got to create your own situations out of what we may put you in a position that isn't good. You got to find your way out of it. And, and I think that's a tough thing to do when you're a young high school kid looking forward to going to college. But in hindsight, I'm sure he'll going to look back in some years and, and a lot of these kids are going to be in 
maybe we're not exactly where they thought they were going to be, but if they make the most out of where they are, they can end up where they ultimately wanted to be in the first place. And and I think that's the lesson to be learned and something that I hope all these young kids out there here who they think that they have their life mapped out, it's impossible to map out your life. I can't even map out what I'm eating tonight. So it's it, it's hard. <laughs> Things happen. You know what I'm saying? I know Chef Boy R. Stray is going to figure it out. I'm not I'm not worried about that. Um, lastly, Stray, I mean, I could talk to you for hours on end. Um, we know that. But lastly, what do you want the people to take away from this series? What do you want other athletes, other high school players, other kids that are in middle schools that are aspiring to be in the position of these kids to gain scholarships and potentially change their families' lives? Uh, what are you looking for the consumer to get out of this project? Well, I think there are going to be a lot of kids or a lot of people who see this and who may see themselves in some of this. Maybe your situation isn't exactly the same, but you pull out what, what, what you need to pull out to understand that if you take control, if you work hard, if you make the right decisions to do the right things, you can change your situation if you're not happy where you are. And it's one thing I was, I was told a while ago by... Um, an actress, Selma Hayek, of all people. Selma Hayek says, said, she she said for herself, she's telling me her mentality, which I adopted for myself, I don't complain about anything I'm not trying to change. And we can grow up in situations and we hate them and we complain about them and we do this and we do that. But now you, I've learned I do not complain about a situation that I'm not or something that I'm not trying to change. And if you can find yourself in some of these situations and you really want to change, don't complain about it. You just got to work at it. You got to work to get yourself out of those situations. I know sometimes it sounds easier said than done, but for those people who have made it, who have done well, they always seem to have one thing in common, and that is a work ethic. And that is the, um, the the ability to, you know, make the right decisions at the right times. And and I just hope that there's encouraging encouragement that comes out of this piece and maybe it'll motivate some other people to get involved in their kids' lives at some of these schools that they may have an opportunity to really help. Um, all right, Stray. So, I mean, obviously in these times, we're all quarantining. We're all trying to be safe. We're wearing masks. What's your what's your message to the people in these tough times um, just to get through? I, I think it's tough for everybody. I think it's scary for everybody. Um, I, I, I think that we still are uncertain about what our future holds and, and when this whole thing is over. But... I'm just one to be on the side of very better safe than sorry. So, you know, my message, wear your mask, take care of yourself and your family. I mean, that's the best thing that you can do in these uncertain times like we're in right now. And continue to I mean, a dialogue, have a conversation. I think that we all miss the physical contact sometimes. Um, and but but just reach out to people. Let people know you care. You never know what you can do as far in, in as far as like inspiring somebody or you know, cheering them up because I think we all need that in these times because sometimes you have a little too much time to think and that could be a little too dangerous. Um, so yeah, man, just, just hang in there, support each other, be kind to each other. And you know what? COVID will be over soon enough, but in the meantime, let's do what it takes and what's necessary to make sure that we can squash it. Man, I've never appreciated normalcy so much. When this world comes back around, the little things is what everybody's going to be excited to do again because you know those are the things you miss the most they're going to the restaurants the fellowship with your friends and things like that like i think people are going to appreciate this world a lot more once uh once we get back to some level of normalcy you know what's so funny i was talking to robin roberts this morning after the show and she goes you know the show just feels like yeah, the, the energy and i said you know i think and i truly believe this because at one point she was in at home in connecticut doing the show george was at his house doing the show. I was the only one in the studio. We cut down the size of the production team so that everyone could work and they come in every other week. So you're on a week, off a week, on a week, off a week. That way everybody can at least make some money. And um, we cre it was just a cool vibe. The guys started playing music they, during the commercial breaks. Like It was as if we need that to break the tension in, of, of whatever fear that we have. But we continued that even though they've come back. And it's the appreciation of every day. It's an appreciation of just life in general, missing what we had, but understanding when it comes back, don't take it for granted. And that's the important message. Stray, I appreciate you. I appreciate your involvement in the project. And I think it's going to open the eyes of a lot of kids and a lot of parents out there, too, to really get an in-depth look at 
you know, what this high school football thing is all about in areas that don't get enough love. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. Keep on inspired, man. Anytime. Um, I love I love to do this. Anytime you want. Anytime. I'm always down. Sounds good. I appreciate you, baby. Man, I honestly want to thank all of you guys for rocking with me during this limited series and taking this journey with myself and Coach Biff Poggi and the entire St. Francis Academy football team and everything that's going on. Uh, you know, we talked to so many different guests from all walks of life and we're highlighting themes and going through different scenarios and poking at the heartstrings, tapping into different areas of our lives that we probably don't talk about enough. You know, talking about different things that you may have grown up doing or saying or going through that I hope we tapped into during this time. I want to thank all my guests, Michael Strahan, Dapper Dan, Dr. Jess Clemens, and the great Coach Biff Poggi. He was incredible to speak to. All my guests were incredible, and uh, they really understood what it is to, you know, come from the trenches, have that triumphant story, paying it forward to everyone. And they all, in my opinion, you know, had the heart of a champion. So thank you to all of our guests. I want to say thank you to HBO. And if you're at your TV watching HBO, make sure you go to HBO Max and rewatch all of this. Get as many tidbits get as much information from this as possible because there's so many gems in the series the limited series as well as this beautiful podcast that you're listening to right here at the moment go back and re-watch re-listen all of that good stuff thank you again to hbo uh this has been incredible uh you guys are have a tremendous platform and i want to thank you guys for allowing me to be on this platform talking to you guys and just telling my journey as well i think that was a big thing for me throughout this whole experience is being able to tell my journey and my story that's so closely tied to what St. Francis Academy is going through and what those kids go through on a daily basis. So this was truly uh, not just an eye-opening experience for me, but also somewhat of a therapy session that I was able to get through. So thank you to HBO for that. And also a big, big thank you to Driven Society, who obviously um, put this all together and put this script together and put together such a powerful piece of culture here within this podcast. We're talking to everybody and putting everything in its perspective. So thank you to them as well. And uh, until next time, guys, until we meet again, whether it's in front of the camera, whether it's in front of a microphone, um, or whether it's in person, uh, stay blessed, light and love to all of you, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.